I'm Ashley Kurtz. And I'm Natalie Columdarian, and this is CLU Live. Hello. NBC Nightly News anchor Brian Williams is currently on a six-month suspension for fabricating an event that happened while he was reporting from the Iraq War in 2003. Although most seemed to be upset when news broke of Williams' fabrication, according to a new Quinnipiac University national poll, 42% of voters said that Brian Williams should be allowed to come back as an NBC Nightly News anchor. Williams is expected to return to the news desk at NBC in August. Calithrin students were in for a treat when NBC News producer Molly Palmer came to speak about her career. Alessandria Posada has the story. I'm here at the Ullman Commons Conference Center where NBC producer Molly Palmer is here to talk about her career with NBC News. Palmer graduated from the College of Charleston in 2005 and started working for the Today Show a year later. She has worked on a variety of stories including Super Bowl 49, Prince William's wedding to the Duchess of Cambridge and the 2010 Winter Olympics in Vancouver. She has helped produce Matt Lauer's exclusive interview with Jermaine Jackson at the Neverland Ranch days after Michael Jackson's death in 2009 and produced a number of celebrity interviews for the Today Show. I think the most rewarding part of my job is um, the people that I get to meet and work with. Um, I love the people that I work with at NBC, and then um, I've had the the privilege of covering some um, some some you know really inspirational stories. I've been watching different segments on the Today Show um, coverage of Newscatcher, and um, just really thought that the combination of the story about her dad career with NBC as well as her own career would be a really nice combination to share with students. The Emmy Award winning producer also talked about her father's memoir, Newscatcher. What did you learn from your father that has helped you in your career at NBC? I think what I learned um, most from him was to be open to learning, um, to really take in what's happening around you, not only in your own work environment, but on any given story. Yeah, I think just to be true to yourself and, um, you know, be honest about what it is that, that you're experiencing. Newscatcher gives readers a behind-the-scenes look at the news industry and includes stories of John Palmer's years leading up to his career in television news. During his 40-year career, he was able to cover some of history's most memorable moments, including the early days of the Civil Rights Movement and the assassinations of John F. Kennedy, Robert Kennedy, and Martin Luther King, Jr. I'm Alessandria Posada, back to you in the studio. Thank you so much for that story, Alessandria. What an amazing way to, you know, get to know what's going on in the news industry. I think it's so interesting to hear from someone who gets to experience putting a new show together firsthand. In recent entertainment news, Lily James is getting a taste of the downside to being in the spotlight. The 25-year-old actress has come under fire recently as people have been criticizing filmmakers of the highly anticipated Cinderella film of digitally altering her body to make it thinner. James, known for her role on the hit television series Downton Abbey, spoke with the Huffington Post on her views about the controversy. You know, it's, it's on one hand it's upsetting, on the other hand it's just boring because it's, you know, why do women always get pointed at for their bodies and why has this whole thing happened and I'm constantly having to justify myself and you know and that's you know National Women's Day is just gone and it just feels just a bit sad but it's still happening. ASCLUG is continuing tradition with the student favorite Mr. Kingsman, a male beauty pageant. Let's hear from Nick Privatelli as he gives us a behind the scenes look with the candidates as they prepare to compete for the coveted title. Mr. Kingsman is an annual event that is put on by ASCLUG it is a competition among 10 CLU men for the crown. To be crowned Mr. Kingsman, each contestant will perform for an audience of students in the Prius Brandt Forum on Friday. Whoever wins the crowd over the most will be crowned Mr. Kingsman. Hi, I'm Nick Privatelli here with Josh Summers, Mr. Kingsman nominee. So Josh, how did you get nominated for Mr. Kingsman? Well, ASCUG had an event where they were handing out cupcakes, and at the same time you could write someone's name in who you thought would make a good Mr. Kingsman and they put it in a little jar and they counted it and my name was in the top four. Thrilling. So Josh, what are some things you're looking forward to in this event? 
Uh, I'm looking forward to everyone representing a different state of America. I specifically am doing Oregon because that's where I was from. Um, so seeing everyone embodied as a state will be super fun and interesting. That's excellent. Is there anything else you'd like to add for our viewers and the attendees of the Mr. Kingsman event? Um, come with posters to make us feel better. You heard it here. This is Josh Summers, and I'm Nick Privatelli. Dope. This shit that ice cold Michelle fight for that white gold This one for them hood girls Them good girls Straight masterpieces Styling, wildin', living it up in the city Got Chuck's on with Saint Laurent Got a I'm here with Mr. Kingsman MCs, Riley Herrera and Chris Hartman. So Riley, what are some of the responsibilities of a Mr. Kingsman MC? One, look good. Two, make Chris look good. Three, you know, get the crowd going, get the people having a good time. And uh, fourth, kind of just like have fun, you know? Amazing. What are some things we can expect from this year's Mr. Kingsman event? Well, Nick, um, we got a lot of pyrotechnics this year. We're kind of stepping it up from last year. Um, dancing sharks, zebras, raccoons, and white elephants, uh, and just good times ahead, gotta say. It's gonna be a good one. Far out. Back to you in the studio. Thank you, Nick, for that look into what it takes to prepare for the pageant. We are very excited to see who takes home the title during the event. Next, we'll get the inside scoop on CLU's first late night sketch show, In the Lou. Jace has the story. I'm Jace Magari Fuji, and I'm here at the SBED building to interview the crew of In the Lou as they get ready for their new upcoming episode. In the Lou is a late night comedy show that features sketches and street segments that aim to add fun to the everyday life of a CLU student. Senior Alexia Chalita created the show with junior Mackenzie Paul over a year ago and both have worked on the project ever since. The show premiered last December and is now releasing its fifth episode with host Kevin Coons who is in charge of the show's editing team. To this show I also oversee a few other things that happen around campus but this is by far my favorite if only because it's literally impossible. And that's wonderful because I've never been in a situation where I am that challenged before. And it's really allowing me to grow and kind of hone my craft, if not out of rigor, but out of necessity. The students involved in the show find the experience invaluable because it gives them a taste of the fast-paced world of making television. Yeah, it's just really fun. It's what I want to do in my life because you get to have some creative input but then again, you just bring everyone together to have this final product. Though the task of finishing an episode every week can seem impossible at first, the In The Lou crew remains inspired by their fearless leader, Alexia Chalita. This show is wonderful because I love the people who are involved in it. The head is a girl named Alex Chalita, and she, I, I got some advice really young that go find something you're good at and go be the best at. And I think she must have heard the same advice because she's really good at being awkward. And I think she's borderline the best at being awkward. If there was a way to monetize that, then she would be filthy rich. And she's very smart about it too because the best bet at monetizing awkwardness happens to be uh, sketch comedy. So why should you tune in? It's like one of those things that like your roommate's probably in it because we chased her down so you can like mock her for the rest of your life about like oh you were kissing that guy in the kissing booth i saw you or like i don't know like oh you got spanked not that <laughs> in the Lou releases episodes every other thursday on their facebook page in the Lou cou's first late night show all right fuji back to you guys in the studio it's great to see clu students coming together and using their talents to produce such positive creative content Thank you so much for that story, Jace. 
Former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton has come under fire for using a personal email account while handling official state business during her term. The controversy stems from the fact that the state allegedly had no access to emails Clinton sent and received during her term. Clinton has announced on Twitter that she would turn over her emails to the State Department for review and release to the public. In this week's sports update, Louise Millay caught up with the Skyac women's basketball trio. Let's pass the ball over to Louise. A trio of Rigo's basketball players consisting of Chelsea Jacoby, Jessica Salatolo, and Sophie Cruz earned high honors in Skyac this week after their season came to a wrap. Junior Chelsea Jacoby was the leading scorer for the Regals this season and has been named to the Skyac first team two years in a row now. Um, you know, it's just a component to our team's success, really, and I mean, I'm honored to be recognized. And um, as far as strengths, uh, I just, you know, I worked really hard to get to where I am. As a transfer coming in last year, I didn't expect anything. I just wanted to play basketball and have fun doing it. So, you know, I just really worked hard. I worked hard off season and on season. Um, worked on my shot worked on you know I had bad games I had good games so I kind of just fed off my bad games and like watched film with my coach tried to you know pick up where I did wrong so sophomore Jessica Salatolo improved her game moving up from Skyac second team to first team this season um it was definitely cool moving up to first team but that is not really what I play for here I I think we really improved as a team overall and that was a big goal of mine. I mean it's nice to see that like hard work does pay off but overall like we put in a really good team effort this year like we won a lot of games we really improved from last year and that was the main goal for me so I'm glad that was accomplished. Sophomore Sophie Cruz was recognized by the league for the first time this season earning second team honors. I feel honored that I was able to gain second team recognition this year. Um, but as far as my mindset, nothing has changed from last year to this year. I've just continued to try and work as hard as I can and improve my game in any aspect that I can to help our team um, achieve our goal and just get better as a team. And any way that I can contribute to that, I tried to do this year. Congrats to this trio for their accomplishments. These hardworking Regals own the court this season, and it's no doubt that they will dominate the court in coming seasons. I'm Louise Millay, and I'm bouncing the ball back to you in the studio. Thank you so much for that update, Louise. Congratulations to the Skyac Women's Basketball Trio. Keep up the good work. Harrison Ford was involved in a plane crash on Thursday, March 5th. According to TMZ, the 72-year-old actor was flying his World War II fighter jet when it started experiencing engine problems, forcing Ford to make an emergency landing on the Penn Mar Golf Course in Venice, California. According to a representative for the actor, Ford sustained minor injuries and is expected to make a full recovery. Cal Lutheran's Career Services does everything they can to be accessible to students on campus. With their guidance, students have been able to find cool internships in their fields of choice. Nisha has a story. With research showing that about 85% of companies use internships in similar educational programs when recruiting for full time, it has become more common for colleges and universities to require internships as part of the major. I was able to sit down with several Cal Lutheran students who are currently interning. Here's a look at their stories. My internship is at Crochet Entertainment Group in Agora Hills. I interned over the summer at a studio called Revolver Recordings. I'm the Campus and Community Partnerships intern, so I work and do events on and off campus that bring nonprofit organizations to Cal Lutheran as well as outside sources. I intern at C Suite Quarterly Magazine in Woodland Hills. I work at BICA on Mondays and Wednesdays from 1 to 5 or 1 to 6, depending on how much stuff I have to get done that day. We worked with artists such as um, Colby Collet, um, Eamon, and uh, Emily Kinney, the, uh, the actress who plays Beth from Walking Dead, Alex G, the YouTube personality. Typically I go to the office and I update all the Facebook and Twitter posts for the company. And it's usually whatever artists they're promoting at the time. So right now it's a lot of the band North of Nine and Lonnie Hall and Herb Albert. So we always do that. So I'm always checking their social medias as well to see what's going on. Um, when we have people who are thinking about advertising in the magazine, we mail them previous issues of the magazine so they can see what it's like, get familiar with it, figure out where they want to advertise. I do a lot of budgeting in my position and kind of making sure that we stay true to budget on certain events, filling out event contracts, 
and actually this job is really what made me decide that I wanted to pick up the emphasis in management and nonprofit organizations. It's really a good experience to just try different things. So obviously once you're after you graduate, you can't really just jump from job to job to job. Don't be too narrow with your field. Definitely. If you try to just focus on one area, you could miss something that was more your calling than something else. It teaches you stuff that a classroom lecture never will be able to do, and you'll gain skills that a textbook will just not be able to portray to you. It's so easy to, to guess what a job is like from the outside, but you don't really know until you actually are inside like the business end of it and inside working there. Of course, it is highly recommended that students get internships before graduation, as it can only help build a resume as well as networking circle. For more information on how one can get an internship, go on to the Cal Lutheran website under Career Services, where you can find more information. Until then, back to you in the studio. Thank you, Nisha. For more information, go to clupostings.com or make an appointment with Career Services at calutheran.edu slash career underscore services. Turning to a more wacky story, the St. Patrick's Day pig has gone missing. Let's send it over to Abby Walder for more on this mysterious disappearance. Friday, March 6th was a dark day for the people of Ventura with the loss of Shamhawk, a big green inflatable pig used every year at their annual St. Patrick's Day parade. Shamhawk was last spotted in a nearby storage facility where a few parade volunteers were supposed to be watching him. Then the unthinkable happened, a pig napping. The pig is approximately 12 feet tall and 20 feet long and is more than just a hollow pig of plastic, but a beloved mascot. Families and kids everywhere love Shamhawk and wait all year just to see him float by. A police report has yet to be filed, but is being taken into consideration as St. Patrick's Day is only a week away. Ventura County citizens are hoping that this is just a simple prank, but as an incentive, parade committee members are offering $100 to anyone who has information or knows where the beloved pork friend lies. Hopefully Shamhawk will be going wee 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 all the way home. I'm Abby Walder, back to you in the studio. This just in, someone has squealed about the whereabouts of the Shamhawk. The Hamburglers have given Shamhawk back just in time for the parade. It is no doubt Ventura County residents will be going hog wild. It's a good thing too. The parade truly would have been a bore without him. Turning to our student profile of the week, Kristen Acosta caught up with student ambassador Shelby Bowman. Shelby Bowman is a senior at CLU and she is currently a student ambassador. The role of a student ambassador works directly with the Office of Alumni and Parent Relations within the university's advancement division. I'm Kristen Acosta for the CLU News and I'm here with Shelby Bowman who is a student ambassador. Shelby, can you tell us a little bit about your duties as student ambassador? So as a student ambassador, um, our job is to go to events um, to, just to support the students and be a voice for um, those people that may donate um, money to our school and we're there to provide a voice for the students and we, we get to show them how much Kalu actually means to us and that can be through different kinds of events for our sponsors. Um, a lot of the time we'll go to corporate leaders luncheons or brunch um, and there you just get to connect with a lot of different people from the Kalu community and it's really um, really enjoyable and, a, and very rewarding as well. Can you tell us a little bit more about what upcoming events you're going to? Um, right now we're getting ready. We're basically just planning graduation at this point, which is one of our biggest events because it is two days. Um, we work both during the undergraduate and the graduate um, graduation ceremonies. And within that, we'll hand out stickers to people. We'll make sure that people can find their seats. Um, a lot of the time it involves just basically making sure people know where they're going. Um, and you also get to talk a lot with the parents, which I really enjoy as well. Since you're a graduating senior, can you tell us a little bit more of how that makes a difference with you being a student ambassador? It makes a difference because I really want to, I guess, place my mark on this school. And by doing so through the student ambassadorship, you get to really reach out to both students and people in the Calhoun community. Um, and you're able to talk more about your, ex your experience. And as a senior, it's really exciting because I get to talk about my full college experience instead of, you know, we have juniors and sophomores where they may only have one or two years to talk about. 
Thank you, Shelby, so much for your time. For now, this is Kristen Acosta for the CLU News. Back to you in the studio. Thank you for that feature, Kristen. That's all we have for today's news update. I'm Natalie Collum Darian. And I'm Ashley Kurtz. Thank you for watching CLU Live, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.